Hey everybody, Red Mage here. Welcome back to my channel. In this video, I'm going to be doing something kind of different. I'm going to be going through the documents for my upcoming GM binder. I say upcoming, it's just something that I'm going to be using, but I wanted to go through and just give you a sense of what I'm going to be including in my in my binder for my world building in my own uh, games. This is something that I used to do as a kid. I used to have you know folders and binders full of my stuff, and then as I got older, I just you know transitioned more and more into PDFs, and I've been trying to stay on the computer less. I just spent a lot of time on it, you know, and I like to kind of like to get away from that. And so I wanted to print off a bunch of the stuff that I normally use in my adventure design process, my campaign building, and put them into a big binder like I used to do when I was a kid. So I'm going to go through some of the stuff that I'll be including in that. I don't know if this will be interesting to everybody, but, you know, I think we often have lots of documents that we use, and they're kind of scattered around, and I went through and kind of curated a bunch that I liked. And I'm going to be putting them in my binder with, you know, obviously room to add more in as I go forward. I also have a bunch of pieces of art that I wanted to include, you know, put in the front and back cover. I'm getting kind of excited about this, even though, it's, you know, it's just a binder, but, um, and it just brings me back to when I was a kid. I'm going to apologize right now, though, guys. I'm sick, and I have been sick for a while. It's one of the reasons I haven't been putting out videos. And so I've just been, you know, if I sniffle or cough and stuff, I'm just trying to, you know, I'll try not to do that, but this is a heads up in case I do. I apologize in advance. So, um... This binder is going to be for world building and campaign generation. It's not going to be something I'm going to run from. So the tables that I have in here are going to be that sort of thing. Stuff that will help me in my adventure design process and my world building process rather than like tables for stuff to run roll at the table. So uh, I start off with um, a bunch of stuff from my classic or from the uh, from the Dungeon Alphabet, which is a book I've reviewed before. And I like the the, the I like the tables on it. But I just like more. I like some more than others, and so I included those here. Some of them are, are for use at the table. Some of them are more esoteric. I don't want to include that stuff. I wanted to include stuff that would be useful, you know, regularly. And so I included these. So I have A is for altars, C is for caves, D is for crypts, D is also for doors. I have dungeon dwelling dragons, twenty enticing entrances, you know, twenty random forms of gold, ten terrible guardians defending terrific treasures. H is for hallways. J is for jewels, odd magical devices found in the dungeon, a score of puzzling potions, 30 random relics from previous adventurers, random original purpose of rooms and chambers, there's lots of tables and subtables there, unusual dungeon stairs, and then a, uh, a statue generator. I have a trap generator as well, and then other stuff. So uh, a bunch of tables from the classic A to Z reference, the Dungeon Alphabet, which I highly recommend. You guys should check it out. It's great. The art is awesome, as you guys can see in this little... I love that one in particular. I just love it. Um, but I didn't want to include everything. As I said, a lot of the tables from that book are kind of weird, or they're specific, really specific. And so I didn't want to include them in this. Now, these are not organized uh, by subject yet. I'm going to be dividing up at some point when I print them out, I'm going to, before I put them in my book, my binder, I'm going to divide them up into subjects. So I'll put like, you know, guardians and dragons in the monster section of my binder. And then I'll have sections on, you know, treasure. And that'll have the jewels and the gold and the magic devices and the relics, along with those sorts of pages from the other documents I'll be going through. So right now I'm just including the books and sort of, but I haven't organized them yet. But I want to, I want to organize them into types, like the subject. Then I have the Cyclic Dungeon Generation by Source of Victory. This is something I've also reviewed, and this is awesome. Uh, if you guys don't, haven't seen this, you should check out my review, but then also go and download this. Um, it's amazing. Cyclic Dungeon Generation is just a design process for making your dungeons, and they're really good. They're not just random, uh, you know, five-room dungeons or linear dungeons. These are all really cool ideas. So the cycles and different ways of thinking about your dungeon paths, uh, alternative paths with different themes, different keys to your locked goal, you've hidden shortcuts, dangerous routes, foreshadowing loops, lock and key cycles, blocked retreats, monster patrols, altered return, false goals. Lots of different sort of, you know, archetypes of dungeons with the ways that you want to lay them out. I really like that. I think that's super cool. And it's something that I can use in my dungeon design process. I can refer back to these pages and just kind of have a, a you know, a system to use. I like it quite a bit. So that's one thing I'm going to be including. Then I have pages from Gentle's Dungeon Guide 1 and 2. This is uh, this is just the original Gentle's Dungeon Guide. Now one thing I wish... I don't remember if this is on there. I don't think it is, but uh, a print-friendly version of these books would be awesome. As it is, they're not quite print-friendly. The page coloring and the... It just doesn't transfer to black and white perfectly, which I'm going to be printing in black and white. I don't think I'm going to print in color. Which means that a lot of these pages are just not quite perfect. Uh, I really like 
print friendly files. You know, if you're creating a, a kind of a unique looking document, it's nice to have some print friendly versions too. So something I could encourage in the future. But you know, this this these booklets are so good. D Gentle's Dungeon Guides 1 and 2. The first one is free, pay what you want. The second one is a little bit, but it's not much. And they're both really awesome. The first one has stuff for dungeon design. So site history tables, the original purpose of the dungeon, what caused the dungeon to fall and its present purpose, faction tables, faction goals, uh, and then going through Source of Victory's cyclic dungeon generation, you get sort of similar advice here for the danger level. Uh, that's a Shadow Dark specific thing. But you get the dungeon location table, the room layout, uh, for how to how to do that, room tables, clue tables, fact tables, how to distribute clues, room content tables, hallway dressings, intersection dressing tables, content checklist. This is really cool. I like that a lot. You know, just to have big dungeons that have a lot of these uh, boxes, things that we run into, right? Original purpose, uh, and then um, things that can you check through that. Iconic moments. This is also awesome in your dungeon. You kind of want those really climactic, cool moments in your dungeon that players remember. And you don't have to like narrate it out, script it out, but rather there's a, a thing that can happen here, right? So there's a combat goal or there's a, you know, escort goal or something like that. This is Dungeon, uh, Gentle's Dungeon Guide 2, along with, it's much, you know, expanded tables. I like them, having them both that way I can kind of have a quick version and a short, a longer version, but a lot more things for dungeon purposes here. 3d6 table, faction goals. Uh, number of factions, faction obstacles, faction impulses. 3d6 tables for faction impulses positive, and then 3d6 tables for faction impulses negative. Or, or there's just neutral, excuse me, and then negative. So there's three full sets of faction impulses. You could roll one for each, right? So you could roll a positive, a neutral, and a negative faction impulse for each faction. You get some really interesting combinations there. Faction composition, right? What is it made up of? What is its population? And then you put it all together. The environment in which your dungeon is located, the path to the dungeon, how it's patrolled, landmarks nearby, secondary entrances nearby, the antechamber to the dungeon. Populate your rooms with experiences, and this is really cool. It's a great kind of meta idea. So instead of just having each of these rooms be kind of what you put in there, you also add an experience for the players in each room of your dungeon. So you want it to be a sensory experience, an immersion experience, a narrative experience, a challenge, a fellowship experience, a discovery experience, an expression ex or abdication experience. And there are tables for each of these. So what's an extent, a, a sensory experience? Well, that's where you give the players a handout, a prop, or some art. That's great. What's an immersion experience? Well, it's where you reinforce a theme, or you introduce some arcane stuff, or some priest stuff, or some theme stuff, right? Let, give your characters a chance to experience something that's really, really um, in flavor with their character. A narrative experience, add a character beat or escalation, a glorious death opportunity, a melancholic moment, a conflict, a crushing victory. And lots of things that the players can kind of have this big narrative moment. You want to add that to your dungeon, a challenge moment, a fellowship moment, discovery, expression, abdication, right? So abdication, fun, also called submissions when you surrender your choice to fate or allow your free will to be subsumed. So it's where you take a gamble, a risk. It's a straightforward fight, 50-50 chance, right? Or where there's a low stakes combat. It's just like, ah, whatever happens, happens. That can be fun. And then you can populate your rooms with combat, treasure, skill challenges, or set dressings. Combat, combat goals with 2d6. Some of these are um, replications from the first Gentle's Dungeon Guide. And you have treasure, skill challenges, set dressing, and then clues. How do you include clues in your dungeon? How to distribute them? The room design and ways to put your rooms together. Room condition, purpose, control, hallways, junctions, travel, lots and lots of great ideas here for how to generate traps, trap-specific, secret door generation. Right, this is just a great document for building your dungeons, and I want this on hand. So that's the, the, the second portion of my book, or my, my tape, my thing, my uh, binder, I should say. I also included this stuff from The Perilous Wilds, which is um, a book I've reviewed again on this channel, you can check it out. But this has a lot of great ideas and advice from the um, dungeon world perspective. And so uh, just advice about how to how to approach the game in that in that mindset. But also there's some cool tables for monster generation, for treasure generation, uh, to just, you know, uh, unnatural features or natural features of a particular place, evidence, creatures, structure, steading tables, town tables, for the different sizes of steadings. And then you have danger tables, Creature tables, if you want to generate a monster. Details for, you know, uh, whenever you need a prompt, right? An aberrance, an activity, an aspect, an adjective, age, whatever. You've got tables to roll on if you just need a quick uh, a quick idea. 
NPC tables, uh, NPC traits and followers, dungeon name combinations, dungeon size, dungeon themes, dungeon overviews, right? So again, you combine these with the Gentle's Dungeon Guide where it talks about developing a theme, and that might have like just a bit of advice on how to do it. These are some tables you can roll to combine with that. Uh, and then there's name every person, a bunch of pre-generated names in different styles uh, and different cultures from the real world. And then I added Maze Rats tables. I love Maze Rats, and I added some tables there. So I just jumped right into the middle of the Maze Rats book with character descriptions, uh, NPC generations, mannerisms, physical details, personalities, things like that. Magic tables with effects, elements, forms, ethereal elements, forms, effects, mutations, insanities, omens, monster tables, uh, character tables, lots and lots of stuff here. Treasure and equipment tables, tables for city generation, tables for the wild generation, tables for the dungeon generation, and then I go into nave. Again, I have career tables, weather tables, travel shifts, signs and locations, structures, place traits, delves, shifts, rooms, room details, room themes, dungeons, trap effects. Great tables for all of these things. Encounter tables, generation of spells and qualities, uh, mutation tables, disaster tables, domain tables, alchemy tables with textures and tastes, colors, ingredients, tools, miscellaneous items, books, clothing. Right. So when I go into my dungeon and I need a, when I'm doing a, you know, a dungeon design, and I have a room of an alchemist lab and I need a bunch of cool potions, well, I can just go in here. Or uh, they go into a wizard's library and I need a bunch of books, I can just put that all together here. Really cool tra uh, tables and things like that. Buildings, generations, city themes and events, street tales. Again, just table and table and table. Nave is, is awesome for all that stuff. Nave 2nd Edition. I love that book for its random tables. So that's what I'm doing. I'm kind of just taking them out and putting them into this book. So I'll have them when I'm generating away from the uh, away from the, uh, the screen because that's kind of my goal. I, I like to, uh, I, you know, again, I like to have it away from the screen. Then I have Shadow Dark stuff. Trap generation, hazard generation, something happens tables, rumor tables, adventure tables, NPCs, rival crawlers, NPC names, Shadow Dark maps, Overland Hex maps, settlement maps, taverns, shops, just, and then of course all the different location random encounters that you can roll together if you're putting together random encounter tables. This is awesome. For all the different bio zones or whatever. I might not include them all because I don't run a lot of these a lot of the time, but I might include some of these. I might take them out before I actually write, uh, put the book together. At some point, I'll probably show you guys the book if uh, when I generate. I mean, it's going to be a binder full of stuff, but uh, eventually I'll put it all together. Um, treasure tables, really good treasure tables. It's one of my favorite parts of the Shadow Dark book is all of the treasure generation and the uh, ways of generating magic items and really cool stuff. I, I've used this for my 5e games for a long time, and they've been great. Tons and tons of great tables from the Shadow Dark stuff. And that's it. So that's the basic book that I'm going to be putting together. I'm really happy with what I have here. It's 255 pages. So it'll be a big binder. You know, I'm looking at pretty thick. But then I also want to break it up with some art. And so I've been going through and finding some cool art from the different books that I have. So this is a piece from Cairn. I really like it. Put it as a section, maybe the monster section or something like that. Uh, maybe some NPC generation. I think this is from Shadow Dark. Uh, this one is from Dungeon Crawl Classics. It's a Peter Mullen piece. I'll jump back a little bit. Oh, yeah, I'll jump in. Yeah, it's a Peter Mullen piece. I love that one. The dragon, you know, just wrecking those adventurers. It's awesome. This one's from Dungeon Crawl Classics as well. I just love this. It's like something out of a pulp magazine. I love it. Um, this is from the Dragonlance book that I have. I really like this one, too. Uh, it's got that... I don't know why I like it so much. Just that chain hanging down into the old ruined city. Uh, I just like that a lot. So this is from Dragonlance. This is from Dragon Slayer, uh, and you've got some other Dragon Slayer pieces here, which I really like. Love that one. That's one of my favorites from the whole book by Greg Gillespie. It's the uh, Dragon Slayer book. Great, another one from that book as well. And then I have this from Nave, which I really like. It's just kind of a hex crawl. It's a great inspiration for me. I like to look at maps, and I think this one, in particular, for some reason, this one just struck me as so inspiring. I think it's because it's generic without being boring. And I mean generic in a nice, like in a positive sense. It's got what you need. Another Peter Mullen one. This one is from Nave 2nd Edition. And then the last one is from the Dungeon Alphabet, which I really, really like. Anyway, that's what I've got. I'm going to be putting these, printing these off and putting them at particular places throughout my, uh, throughout my uh, binder. Anyway, I hope this has been interesting, guys. I don't know. You know, it's just one of those random things. I decided that I just wanted to put a video out there and, and uh, you know, just let you guys know that I'm still around. Um, have disappeared. And once I feel better, I'm going to start making more videos. Again, I have a couple lined up that I think will be really fun. All right, guys. Well, I'll see you around.